Mommy doesn't want her darling baby to be hurt. As she hears the all too familiar don'ts, her normal need to learn by doing is curbed. She clings to her mother for safety. No, Margaret, it's sharp. You cut your hand. You mustn't do that. You'll smash your thumb. Margaret, how many times must I tell you not to climb? You could fall and break a leg. Darling, those are sharp scissors. You'll cut off your fingers. Margaret, little girls don't climb on gates. You'll hurt yourself and get all dirty. Mommy wants you to be her good little girl and keep neat and tidy. Love, Mommy? She depends now too much on her mother's approval. It is safest to avoid all activities which seem dangerous or which her mother wouldn't like. A little sister, now mother's affections must be shared. The baby takes up time and attention that otherwise would have been hers. When she feels insecure, she seeks protection, but too often she chooses awkward moments to ask for it. No, no, go and play. Daddy's busy. Can't you come and get this child? Normal rebuffs are exaggerated by her feeling of insecurity. She has too few devices to turn to. Normal activity has already been too much discouraged. When she cannot get attention, she feels she is not wanted. She competes for the attention she feels she must have. Mommy and Daddy don't love little girls that show off. To show off is bad. If you are bad, no one will love you. She tries other ways, creative ways, to get attention and affection, but finds no encouragement. What is it? A little girl and two bears. I've never seen a bear that looks like that. Look, Mommy. Margaret, take your dirty paints away. I don't want my laundry all messed up. Her parents don't understand Margaret's needs, and this robs her of an outlet through self-expression. Because her self-confidence has already been damaged, she gives up easily. Can't you look after this child? Look after yourself. I'm busy. Now, be a good girl, I'll paddle you. She learns to be a good girl, to do what she is told. This gains her very little, but she runs no risk of losing approval. Margaret's parents are not unusual. Parents who are fond of their children can still discourage them from growing up active and competent. You've been a good girl. By the age of eight, she is a model child. What she has been made, she now is. She never quite grows up. Even as an adult, she is still the good child. In order to grow up, she must learn how to face up to her difficulties. The model child does not necessarily become the happy adult. She's a good girl. Mm. Hey, Martha, come and play! No! I'm taking care of the baby!
By now, she is able to work out her personal problems with others in a group under guidance. In this understanding environment, Margaret finds that she is not alone with her difficulties. She feels that she belongs. She is no longer so afraid to express her real feelings and to assert herself. Walking shoe and yet a very dressy shoe. I have your size in this. She is not by the crippling ties of childhood. Take this one, Margaret. Be a good girl, we won't love you. Margaret, do as you're told. No, as a matter of fact, I don't like any of those at all. Can you show me something else, please? Something a little gayer. With new understanding, headaches bother her less. Having fewer conflicts, she has fewer symptoms. In all her contacts at home, in the office, and with her widening circle of friends, she is beginning a new life. Some lessons of childhood can be learned too well and carried over into adult life. Sometimes they can become the source of illness which has no discoverable basis in physical conditions. Through increased understanding of these factors, the individual learns how to stand up for himself. He becomes more faction in the world of his fellow men.